Baptist Chapel Church. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God that went to the cross for us. A God who understands that we are just mere dust. But yet he went to the cross to give us a chance. Today we will be spending some time looking at the topic diet and spirituality. And so our key text for today is going to be taken from 3 John 1 verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Let's bow our heads together. Loving Father, Lord, we, your children, come before you to give you all the thanks and praise that's due unto your holy name. Bless us today one more time as we spend time in your word in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We are in the month of January, and this is the time when people make Lots of New Year resolutions. This is the time when people spend a lot of time making goals, looking at their life as they reflected on the year that has just passed, and, and they would oftentimes come up with goals for the, the year, the, the following year. We are in 2024. This is hard to imagine. I remember sitting with my grandmother in 1995 as we reflected on the soon coming 2000. And we are now in 2024. That is hard to imagine. And so in 2024, as we entered into this time, we, we, many of us or some of us would have, would have found ourselves feasting on some of this good stuff. Feasting on some good old-fashioned black cake. I see some of you shaking your heads as you look at that nice piece of cheesecake. And the other good stuff that's there. I wouldn't call any names because I get in trouble. But many of us spent a lot of the, the, the festive time eating and drinking, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we, we come into 2024 with some goals. Because over that time, Sister Carrie Ann, we would have put on a little bit of weight, right? We would have put on some weight, and so we come in to 2024 with some resolutions. In fact, uh, it was looked at closely recently, and um, the question was asked, what are the, the three most common New Year resolutions? And in a Forbes Health uh, article, it was discovered that uh, improving fitness, Finance and mental health were the top three uh, areas that people focus on. But oftentimes we go through the year, and so we continue to make New Year resolutions. And, and so some of you may find yourself or may know individuals who are already have already signed up for gym membership. And they're in the gym, and they're working out, and they're trying to be able to lose that extra weight. They're trying to find themselves in a better place uh, because some would have purchased uh, different uh, outfits over the holiday season and they want to make sure they could fit into them. And so the gyms are packed. LA Fitness and all of these other uh, local gyms are packed with individuals as they are seeking and they're looking at ways of how they could improve their health and improve their overall well-being. In fact, it was also cited in the Forbes magazine that improving uh, fitness, uh, as I said earlier, finance, weight loss, and improving diet were high on the agenda for many individuals here in the United States. In fact, it was discovered that women feel slightly more pressured to set New Year resolution than men do. Interestingly, after setting goals and sitting down and reflecting on the year that had just gone, it was also discovered that 80% of those individuals, by the middle of February, those New Year resolutions would have faded away. 
So in other words, we, we are sitting, setting goals to improve our lives, and by the middle of February, though the, the motivation to see those goals uh, go through to the end of the year evaporates. In fact, the report actually showed, and it was so specific, that they were able to identify that the 17th of January was the date where most of the goals evaporate. The 17th of January was just a couple of days ago. So we got off on a good note. <laughs> this is for daily. We got off on a good note, right? And by the 17th of January, most individuals would have lost motivation for their goals in terms of fitness, health, and losing weight. In some ways, it seems as though we have sort of uh, fit ourselves into the, the commercial cycle in which we find ourselves sometimes when it comes to health and overall well-being. This uh, cycle that sometimes continues from year to year has actually contributed to an increase in chronic diseases here in the United States. In fact, it is shown that six in 10 adults in the United States have a chronic disease. And four in 10 adults have two or more of these diseases. That's heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and kidney disease. In other words, if I look at 10 individuals here, six out of those individuals would have at least a chronic disease and at least four of them would have kidney disease. That means the quality of life for those individuals would be significantly impacted. That means that uh, the cost to attend to those diseases would have been digging deeper and deeper into our pockets. This means, this means that we need to take a careful look at chronic diseases. In fact, it is shown that chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes are the leading cause of death and disability here in the United States. The research shows that it contributes to 4.1 trillion, with a T, annual health costs here in the United States alone. So we need to take a look at what's happening. We need to accept that we are not making significant progress with our health. We need to start over. We need to start over because the, 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 the trend that we are seeing, and every year where we, our, our motivation for improving our health fades by the middle of February, that means that by the end of the year, so every year that passes, we are adding five to 10 more pounds on whatever our body frame is, which is leading to significant health problems. So we need a new start. We need to take a different or a fresh look at our lifestyle. We need to take a, a look at our nutrition. We need to take a look at how much exercise we are getting in every week, the water that we're drinking, the amount of sunlight that we're getting. I was surprised to discover uh, that for many individuals, they are suffering from a deficiency of vitamin D. We have to take a look at, at, at being temperate. Because quite honestly, some of us, we, we do a good job in the quality of food that we eat, but it's that second round that gets us all the time. It's that second serving that gets us all the time. We need to take a look at the quality of air that we're breathing, because there is still something that is called indoor air pollution. Our lifestyle puts us in a, a place where we're not getting enough rest. Our bodies need a certain amount of, of sleep every night, and our lifestyles are putting us in a position where we are not getting enough rest. And we need to continue to trust in God even more so because the, 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 the air we are breathing and some of the things that we are encountering is becoming a challenge to us. Interestingly, some of you may have heard recently about blue zones. Any of you have heard of blue zones? So a guy by the name of Dan Butner, he was uh, 
uh, National Geographic Explorer, and he discovered in 2000, in the year 2000, he was doing uh, an investigation in Japan, and he discovered that, that folks in Okinawa, they, they were easily cruising into their 90s and, and 100s with no problem. These individuals uh, had no chronic disease. He then went on to discover, he then went on to discover that there are a couple other areas in the United, in, uh, actually across the world, where these individuals, their lifespan ex exceeded the average lifespan of individuals here in the United States. Is it that this guy was onto something? I would say that to live to be 100 years is a blessing. I'll say it again. To live to 100 years is a blessing. And these individuals who are living to 100 years, they were doing it without heavy dependence on medication. Is it possible that this guy is onto something? So he discovered that there are roughly about five areas across the world that are acknowledged or identified as blue zone. Number one is Loma Linda in California, Nicoya in, in Costa Rica, Sardinia in Italy, Ikira in Greece, and Okinawa in Japan. And so what he discovered that these different areas, they actually had, the folks that lived in these areas, actually had things in common. He discovered that these individuals had a very simple diet of vegetables, fruits, grains, and legumes. I'll say it again. Of vegetables, fruits, grains, and legumes. Is this guy onto something? So today's presentation is going to be very interactive. So my question is, is he onto something? Or is this something that have been in existence before? Let's take a look, because I believe we have seen this before. You see, the original diet, as was introduced in the Bible, the original diet as that was introduced in the Bible poses the idea of grains, legumes, and vegetables. I mean, vegetables was added after rum, but the whole idea of fruits and eating a very simple diet. So Dan discovered that these individuals share a lot of things in common, and one of those things was the simplicity of their diet. He discovered that their diet supported uh, their longevity, and the simple activities that they did from time to time kept them active. Here is what uh, Ellen White says. She says, in order to know what are the best foods, we must study God's original plan for man's diet. He who created man and who understands his needs appointed Adam his food. Behold, he said, I have given you every herb yielding seed and every tree in which uh, is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for food. Upon leaving Eden to gain his livelihood by tilling of the earth under the, under the curse of sin, man received permission to eat the herb of the field. She goes on to say, she goes on to say that grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constituted the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These food prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. They impart strength a power of endurance, and a vigor of intellect that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. So is it, is it possible that outside of the Seventh-day Adventist uh, community, more and more individuals are discovering the blessings of the health message? Let me repeat it again. Is it possible that there are more and more individuals who are living outside of the Seventh-day Adventist community are discovering the blessings 
of the health message. They may not see it as a health message, but they see it as good, a good lifestyle to support healthy living. I want to be able to share with you this recently. I know Sister Franca is in the audience, but Dad and I are very good friends. And he uh, lost a good friend recently, um, just a couple weeks ago, that was very close to my family. And he died at the age of 96. He lived, no problem. His buddy died a couple weeks before, died at 100 years old. These guys simply cruised in into the 90s. No issues. No major issues. And if the issues came up, how they ate was able to support them being able to get to that age. That short period of time gave them the opportunity to see their relatives walk across the stage. They were able to see their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren be born. They were able to walk their children down the aisle. The extra year in longevity meant the most to these individuals. And I would suggest to us, it could still mean a lot to us today. Let's take a, a, a simple look. Just a small amount of spinach is packed with carotenoids that would eventually turn into vitamin A, packed with antioxidants. And by the way, antioxidants are these chemicals that are loaded in some of the fresh fruits that we have that fight against those free radicals that damage our cells. All of these things are packed right there in simple spinach. Let's take another look at the berries. All the different, different berries that we have out there. I have some of them listed here. Blackberries loaded in antioxidants. These are cancer-fighting chemicals. that are loaded with cancer-fighting chemicals. Strawberries that reduces your chances of getting inflammation. And if some of you paid close attention when we were going through uh, COVID, the signature of COVID was increasing the amount of inflammation that our body produces. And that inflammation impacted the way how, how our organs function. And as a result, a lot of individuals succumb to COVID. Look at the level and the quality of nutrients that we're getting from some of these different uh, foods. Another one. There's often time people say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Just eating a simple apple gives you all of these different nutrients. Some of you may or may not like avocados, but see how many nutrients you're getting from just one avocado. God's best packaged fruit, the banana. It's already packaged. But see how many nutrients you're getting from eating one banana. Copper, manganese, selenium, all these different vitamins, uh, B uh, complex that you're getting, even protein and water. One of the best packaged fruit that we have. Take another one, flax seed. Look at the, 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 the wide variety of amino acids is loaded in that one small seed. The vitamins, the omega fat the omega uh, fatty acids, the proteins. All of, these, uh, all of these different foods, they're simple, but yet they're packing a really, really high amount of uh, nutrients that our body needs. But in Genesis chapter 9, we come across something different. We come across where God introduced meat after the flesh. So you could see there on the picture, and you could imagine on the table of many individuals, year after year, the amount of, of meat that is consumed. Uh, and so the Bible introduces the idea of meat to our diet. With that introduction, we start to see something very interesting happen. So most of the individuals that lived before the introduction of meat lived well over 800 years. Once we start introducing meat into our diet, we start seeing a significant decline in how long people live. The 
let that sink in for a little bit. While the Bible gives provision for consuming clean food, we are living in a time where we probably need to take a second look at God's original. Am I making sense? So God introduced, and he, he sort of uh, reviewed with the children of Israel because the concept of clean and unclean meats existed long before Israel was created as a nation. And he said, well, if you need to eat meat, at least let it be clean. And how you prepare it, it has to be prepared a certain way. But understand that if you consume it, it will, in fact, have an impact on your life. In fact, let's look at a couple of Bible facts. We are very, very uh, familiar with the story of Daniel and his friends when they were taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar. And one of the first things that they did, they, they changed their names and they introduced, they tried to introduce them to a different diet. In fact, uh, Daniel 1 verse 7 says, and the chief official gave them new names, uh, Belteshazzar, Hananiah, Mishael, Mi, uh, Mishael, and Abednego, Azariah and Abednego. But the Bible says Daniel was resolved or he was, he was purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the royal food and the wine. And he asked permission that they give him and his friends a different diet. So they are now confronted. They are away from their parents, and it was very, very easy for them to be able to give in to the temptation. There's nobody watching. They're there. Nobody's going to take back word. After all, they are in the palace, and everyone else is outside of the palace. But these young teenagers stood up for what they know to be true. They were given the food test. And notice that sin entered through a food test. Hello? Sin entered through a food test. When Jesus was on the earth, before he started his ministry, one of the tests was about food. Am I correct? If you are the son of God, then make the stone that is in front of you, make it become bread. So somewhere along the Christian experience, understand that we're going to be tested by the by the issue of food. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, Daniel said to the guards, simply give us some vegetables and water for 10 days and then compare us with the other guys. And I guarantee you, there will be a significant difference. Daniel and his friends were simply relying on a diet that he had known to be true and proven for hundreds of years. So the question now that we have to to come to grips with, is it possible that we need to take a second look at God's original plan? Here are a couple of Bible facts. The children of Israel ate meat or ate, had a meal or the Passover meal that included meat. Jesus and his, his disciples ate the Passover meal. After Jesus was written, he had, he had fish with the disciples. Jesus fed over 5,000 individuals with bread and fish. Through the Bible, we could see a common theme where sometimes meat is okay or it was allowed. But again, the time in which we're living now, is it possible that we need to take a second look at this? Let's take a, a, a step. Let's go a little bit deeper. There are a couple individuals throughout history have been a strong supporter or they add a plant-based diet. Number one, Plato, Leonardo, Susan B. Anthony, and she is a very strong uh, individual in American history. We know Gandhi because he also influenced Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Einstein, Rosa Parks, and Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife. But you say to me, Brother Randy, but these individuals are sort of, they're gone, right? Uh, let's take a look at individuals who are currently living. Bill Clinton. So he became a vegetarian after he uh, had undergone heart surgery. And when you get to a certain age, 
you sort of look back on life and you look to certain elements in the future and you just want to be able to experience some simple things in life. For him, he just wanted to be there to, to become a grandfather. Perhaps to walk Chelsea down the aisle. So he decided to, 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 to select a lifestyle and a diet that would maintain his activity and help him to stay active. Let's look at one more individual. Venus Williams. She became a vegetarian, uh, not a vegetarian, she became a plant-based or a vegan after she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And since then has been a strong proponent or individual supporting a plant-based diet uh, for the last several years. So my question again is, is it possible that individuals outside of the Adventist community is now seeing the benefits of a plant-based diet? And if they're getting it, why is it that so many of us are running away from it? Hello? I'm not preaching today. Because I really want what I'm sharing to sink in. So the folks outside the church, they're running to it, and the folks in the church are running away from it. And what we're starting to see is more and more of our, our folks, our people, getting sick. They are causing and helping a lot of our doctors to become rich, more and more wealthy. Our diet today is no longer simple. Could somebody tell me what melodactrin is? We have been able to, chemists, we have been able to take the, corn, the starch in corn and we have been able to manipulate it into a, a host of different things. Because today, our diet is all about how do we manipulate taste to fool our taste buds. How do we manipulate taste? And all of these different substances you're seeing on the screen came from corn starch. That's why corn is such a heavily produced grain in the United States. Because you could get all of these different things from corn starch. Our diet today is no longer simple. They're filled with dyes, and they're high in sodium. And try going to the local uh, supermarket and see how many foods you could, you could purchase that does not have high fructose corn syrup. 75% of the food that we consume have high fructose corn syrup. But again, our diet today is no longer simple. And as a result, we have a lot of free radicals because as your body breaks down all of these, you have all these free radicals that are bombarding the cells. Some of it is leading to a lot of mutation, which is causing more and more cancer, all of these different things that we are facing. So a couple of things we need to remember. Someone who is vegan or vegetarian, if they're overeating, not getting enough sleep, not exercising, can still develop, um, can still develop health problems. Someone who is, is, who is not aware that their, their diet can and does influence their behavior. The largest group of people, as I acknowledged earlier, who are living on the earth, they are living on a plant-based diet. So again, I ask, is it possible that more and more people outside of the Adventist circles are running to the message and some of us are running away from it. Eating a plant-based diet can reduce our chances of getting sick and type 1 diabetes. Let's go a little bit further. This facility, I worked at this facility. It's, it's about 20 minutes away from my house. This is D.C. long-term detention center. And... Uh, Individuals like uh, Sister Dahlia understands that when you have individuals that come into the facility, they could be very violent or very dangerous. When they, these young men would actually come to our facility, one of the things that we actually did, we adjusted their diet. And within two weeks, we would start seeing a change in their behavior. 
by the time by, by the time we will get to the end of the month, those individuals were no longer no longer violent, but they were we were sitting in the auditorium having award service. And we did that year after year after year after year. Not only so, those young people, they went on when they got they did their standardized test. Their their academic acumen grew two to three grade levels within six months because now their diet was supporting their brain activity. But unfortunately, when some of these young men would go back to their community, they would revert back to the old diet that they had. In that facility, you would think that this is what the detention looked like many years ago. They changed out the furniture, but it roughly still looks the same. And you would think, this is, this is no jail. Because when you change certain elements in a person's life, they're no longer what you think they are. And I was there, many of you prayed for me while I was there. But quite honestly, I was safer in there than where I am today. Say it again. I'm safer, I was safer in there than where I am today. But let's let's look at another personal story. So this is uh, Dr. Kamal Woods. Dr. Kamal and I and Judy, we all went to school together. Him and I, we studied biochemistry. Um, he was a very good and close friend of mine. He hails from the island of St. Vincent. Amen. And uh, he actually uh, was there with of his other brothers, and uh, he was the first person that, that shared with me the connection between diet and brain surgery. He talked about his lifestyle before making that transition, and I just want to share with you a short video that shows how, not only how his, his, his transition to a plant-based diet uh, what it did for his life and supported his his medical pursuit, but what it had led, what it now has led to, and people who are now benefiting from that transition. It looks really good. Just outside of Dayton, the city of innovation, a medical breakthrough took place. Neurosurgeons wouldn't touch me. I had one doctor tell me that I was going to live the rest of my life like that. It was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, but not hopeless. Travis Wells from Middletown wanted to find a solution for his severe neck deformity. Like having a migraine 24-7 for almost three years. After several neurosurgeons, pain specialists, Botox injections, and a lot of prayers, Wells was referred to Dr. Kamal Woods, a neurosurgeon for Kettering Health Network. I just was overwhelmed with how severe his neck deformity was. Um, his uh, left chin was on his left shoulder. He could not look up. One of the challenges Dr. Woods had is that this surgery had never been done before in the world. The feeling that I had was more one of responsibility and accountability because he was so trusting and willing to put his life in my hands, then I really knew that I had to take my very best care of him. They went ahead with the risky surgery. The world literally changed. I, I took a 12 and a half hour nap and woke up and saw things completely differently. Giving Wells a new outlook to life, literally. I went from viewing everything horizontally and down to being able to look people in the eye again. It was actually on my feet day one. It brought tears to my eyes. Powell Sir 09 on your side. conversation. He wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I wanted to be a cardiologist. And he was disappointed when I told him I was going to become an educator. But God is good because where I landed, I was still able to help individuals. Amen? And so I want to share with you another personal story. And this is, this comes from the personal story of uh, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City.
I am Brooklyn Borough President uh, Eric Adams, and I'm really joined by the true heroes and sheroes. I went to the doctor. He stated, Eric, your diabetes is at a dangerous level. I got to put you on insulin right away. I had nerve damage in my hands and feet. I lost a lot of my feeling on my right thigh from uh, nerve damage. And during that same time, I was losing sight in my left eye and the right eye was going out also. And so uh, little did I know that all of those symptoms were indicators that the diabetes had reached a very dangerous level. I don't think anything is more frightening than waking up and you could no longer see the alarm clock. I started out my public service career as a member of the New York City Police Department. I think I had probably the typical police slash politician diet. And you know, I love to always end the rumor right away that says cops love donuts. Um, that is not a rumor, it's a fact. I ate all types of donuts from jelly to cream to glaze. I always exercised, but my diet was horrendous. I'm on the move. Um, as an elected official, as a police officer, I did steady midnight, so it was difficult to find uh, things that were open late at night. So whatever I can get, I would grab and, uh, you know, just munch on, you know, bad food habits. What was amazing is that uh, not one doctor that I visited um, said anything about nutrition and food. Books Over Knives plan was just so helpful when I read it in the entire book and I needed that plan. Cleaning out my cupboards, what to remove, looking at the list of things that you can eat, understanding the power of foods and what they do. And all of that information just made me so smart. In three weeks, my eyesight cleared up when I changed my diet. In three months, all the nerve damage was gone, the ulcer was gone. All of those symptoms that I had associated with my diabetes disappeared. And how old are you again? 57. And you have the kidney function of a 30-year-old. Your sugars look good. Mm -hmm. They're normal. Your three-month sugar, your A1C, mm -hmm. has gone from 17 to 5.7. And that's now with no medication. Your inflammation is non-existent. And inflammation is a key factor also in diabetes and the risk for heart attack. In the past, my entire meal was built around my life. Now my life is built around my meal. I chop up my kale, my carrots, my other item that I'm going to use, and I leave them in bags in the fridge. And so when it's time for me to make a meal, I just take a handful of each and put it all together. 90% of the things that I eat is because I cook. I'm in control of what I eat, and no one else is in control of that. It's so important for me to keep my energy levels up. Early today, I had a protest with uh, private housing, that people were being left out. Then I had a meeting in public housing where some public residents was having problems. Then I had my staff meeting with my team to keep them abreast. I have a public event tonight uh, with those who want to look at vegan slash plant-based lifestyle. I have two dinners that I have to attend to actually entertain my Chinese guests that came from out of the country. So if my energy level is not up, I'm not able to deal with the issues that people are having and continue to build those international bridges that I look to do. We can save more lives with plant-based diet if people will only realize they are enslaved to fats, oil, sugar, and things that are killing their body. And we're going to make sure that we allow our children to have healthy food. It's not a model, it's a reality. We're going to raise healthy children and families in the borough of Brooklyn and in the city of New York. When you have a chronic disease, it cripples your entire family. And if I could teach families not how not to go through that and just experience life where their family members are not experienced Alzheimer's, where grandparents can't identify their grandkids, and families are going through chemotherapy and a 
uh, mothers are dealing with asthma. If I can do that, if I can change that, that is the end of the chapter. And I mean, I had a great life. So essentially, Eric Adams reversed diabetes. If by a show of hands, if you could just simply raise your hand if you know someone that has diabetes. By a show of hands. So diabetes is all over. By a show of hands, if you could put your hand up for so, if you know someone who's had or has And so we have right here an individual. Many of you could recognize Sister Rogers and Pastor Rogers. They're like my second parent. And for more than 20 years, she has beaten cancer. Amen. After it surfaced many years ago, uh, she made and continues to make adjustments to her diet. And we are blessed to have her here with us today. I'm going to say it again. We are blessed to have her here with us today. She's a living example. Our own local hero of someone who made an adjustment because, not only because it's there in the Bible and it's supported by, by spirit of prophecy, but it made sense. And today, because of that, she has lived long enough to be able to see her grandchildren. She has lived long enough to be able to see God's house rebuilt. She has lived long enough to be able to see so many different things happen. She is my hero because she understands what it is to pivot in a time where things, it, it makes sense. Not only is she a strong supporter of plant-based diet, but she also is a strong supporter of the New Start lifestyle. Because oftentimes we get tied up into, into what's happening with the fat diets and all of, you know, the books, and, and before you know, you're off of it and the weight comes back. It requires a lifestyle change. And what I love about the New Start diet, or the New Start, sorry, lifestyle, is because God is part of the plan. He is the one who is able to give us staying power to be able to work through uh, the temptations when they come <laughs> and to be able to help us. But I also I wanted to take a minute and talk about what God has been doing for me. Many of you know I'm a husband and father. I'm a preacher and a servant of God, educator, mentor, and leadership coach. In 2015, I was recognized by the U.S. De Department of Education. And the school that I led while I was a principal was, was featured in the New York Times, the Education Trust, and the Southern Education Foundation. I was also uh, selected as a Teacher of the Year many years ago when I taught. And recently, as recent as 2021, I served as a City Bridge Fellow. All of these things happened because 20 years before, I made a commitment to start making some shifts in my diet. My grandmother always, always recommended to me that, Rennie, you need to eat foods that will support your brain activity. You need to eat food. She had no idea the depth of that statement, but I had to make that shift, and today it is paying off to me big time. Because when I was in a hospital and the doctors were trying to figure out what was happening. I realized it was the health message that protected me. You guys don't understand. When you're hooked up to all different sorts of machine and people are trying to figure things out and you know exactly what's going on and they're coming to you, streams of doctors are coming and they're trying to figure things out and you could really tell them like, it's God's plan. I went to my cardiologist in, in November and uh, you know, he said, Renny, you actually have a, a good bill of health. Went back after I was in the hospital recently, and we are going through, and I knew he didn't understand the concept health message. So I said, 
My diet is sort of similar to the folks in the blue zone. And he said, aha, that makes sense. And he said, Rennick, just continue doing what you're doing. Today, God has blessed us. And because of that, not, not only am I here, but I'm also here to support my family. Amen? We are blessed because God is still calling us. Jesus is still calling us. The Lord intends to bring his people back to live upon simple fruits, vegetables, and grains. God provided fruit in its natural state for its first parents. Spirit of Prophecy goes on to say, God is working in behalf of his people. He does not desire them to be without resources. He's bringing them back to the diet originally given to man. Their diet is to consist of food made from the material he has provided. The materials principally used in these foods will be fruits, grains, and nuts. And ve but various roots will also be used. Let none who profess godliness regard with indifference the health of the body and flatter themselves that the intemperance, there is no sin. Say it again, that there is no sin and will not affect their spirituality. A close sympathy exists between the physical and the moral nature. A continual transgression of God's natural law is a continual transgression of the law of God. And so I say again, is it possible that the folks outside of the church are getting the message while the folk in the church are running away from it? They are outliving the folks in the church. A large proportion of all of the infirmities that affect the human family are the result of their own wrong habits. Because of their willing ignorance or of their disregard of the light which God has given in relation to the laws of being, it is not possible for us to glorify God while living in violation of the law of life. I say it again. It is not possible for us to glorify God because we're willingly doing it and expect to bring glory to God. As I close with this statement, brothers and sisters, you have a work to do. That includes me. No one can do for you. Awake from your lethargy, and Christ will give you life. Change your course of living. Change how you're eating, how you're drinking, and how you're working. This life that we now exist would cause us to work, work, and work ourselves into the grave. We are no longer getting the amount of rest that we should be getting. We're no longer drinking the water and getting the, 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 the good nutrients that we should be getting. While you're pursuing the course you have been following for years, you cannot clearly discern, guess, check this out, sacred from eternal. This is where the struggle is. Because our lifestyle is significantly in, impacting our spirituality. To the point that, that in, in the last days, in which we are living, by the way, when other elements of the last days, such as the Sunday law and all of these things started being introduced, that's how God's people going to get caught up. Because we are not spiritually strong. Because our diet is not, is not there to support our spirituality. Your sensibilities are blunted. Your intellect is beclouded. You have not been growing in grace and in the knowledge of truth as your privilege. You have not been increasing in spirituality, but growing more and more darkly. So is it possible we need to take a second look? Is it possible? 
Because everything about the food that we're eating, for the folks that are doing it, that are making it, it's all about money. I'll say it again. Everything about the food industry, it's all about money. It's not, not about us being able to have a healthy life. They understand that food today is all about chemistry. And so I close with this. Is it possible that we need to take a fresh look and have a new start? As we take a look at our diet and our spirituality, I pray that God bless us.